Hello, my name is David Gallo. I'm conservation biologist at the Percy Fitzpatrick Institute of African Ornithology, and I am passionate wildlife uh, photographer. Um, I started to take photo when I was uh, a young student at the university. Um, for the simple reason that it was easier for me to show to my parents with photo what I was what I was doing in the field. So from the beginning, for me, it was a, a, a form of communication. I was studying a, a natural science, so I started to see with my binocular, with my telescope, how beautiful is, is nature. And then I say, I think I want to take photo of it. I think I want to share with the other people uh, this kind of uh, moment. I've been taking photos for about 15 years, most of them in, back home in Italy, precisely in Sicily, where actually there are no many birds and birds are scared to humans, so it was very difficult for me to approach birds. But today, I think uh, those years, they were very important for me to, to practice. I moved in South Africa about three years ago to start my PhD project on, uh, on seabirds. And the good thing is that um, uh, one of the main tools that I'm using is uh, simply the camera. Now I've been able to stay nearby my study species, which is the great crested tern, known as a, a swift tern in, in South Africa. And I spend so many hours taking photos of, uh, of these splendid birds. For my PhD project, I'm investigating the conflict between human activities and wildlife, in particular the impact of fishery over a seabird population. The characteristic of, my, of the swift tern is that they've been increasing in the last uh, few decades contrast to, in contrast to penguins, gannets and, and cormorants. So we try to uh, study their foraging ecology, in particular try to understand what they've been eating. And because they are single prey loaders, so the, the prey is uh, visible in the, in the bill, I simply have been taking photo while they were passing with the prey uh, returning to the, to the colony. I've been identified more than 24 thousand prey without any disturbance and so we developed this, uh, this method and with this we all also can estimate the size of the prey with a quite a good precision. So we've been using photography to collect scientific data. I have to say that today um, I see photography in, 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 different, in different way. Photography is a way to communicate, is a way to, to dream, is a way to work but it's also a way to experiment, to, to, to play. Spend three breeding season and take every day photo help me to improve my skills. But also, um, I, I still really enjoy taking photo. Maybe not anymore birds on a stick, because it's quite simple and it doesn't really communicate much. But try to experiment, try to uh, uh, achieve a specific um, maybe intimate photo of the birds or describe a specific behavior or um, get something unusual, get something that uh, has never been seen. So that is uh, one of my goals now for photography. One of the, my favorite photos that I took at the beginning, which I call it a family portrait, describe an interesting behavior of the species where the two parents make a sort of circle around the, the chick because they try to protect their chicks uh, from other adults or other gulls that try to steal the prey. And I really like the composition, the color and the, and the mood of this photo. So I noticed near the colony, the adults, after the they delivered the fish, they were uh, passing by a, a, a sort of quarry, so a place where there was a lot of fresh water and they were just snatching the water. So I say, this is very interesting behavior, let's try to take a photo, but clearly it was very difficult, especially when I was approaching uh, this area, they will all uh, fly away. So I decided to build a little hide and leave the hide there for a few days, just to accustom uh, the birds to that hide. And I spent several afternoons there, low in the ground, try to be ready for any action around me, and at the end I finally took the photo that I want. One of the photos that I also like is, um, is because I combined several techniques together. I, it was pretty much dark, there was just a little bit of a purple background and this uh, adult was uh, flying with, uh, with a fish in his, uh, in his build. So I took a photo of this adult with a long exposure, so I got the blur movement of this adult still catching the color in the background and then a burst of a flash in the second curtain, so I've been able to freeze the last movement of this bird.
Last year I was lucky to win uh, above the line category of a, a photography competition Save Our Seas. Um, the photo is titled Turbulent Penguin and take photo of penguins is, is no easy task, not only because they are not a very dynamic subject, but because everyone takes a photo of penguins. So I wanted to take a very original and unusual perspective of these birds. I decided to make their environment moving rather than the subject moving. So I, I use a long exposure, try to get the waves around uh, the penguins uh, move with having this sort of a silky effect around it. But I've been trying for three years this sort of photo, failing because Meanwhile, the waves are moving, also the penguins are moving, so I obtain a lot of blur image. But that specific photo, and I use my knee to be, you know, as a, as a monopod. I was lucky because the subject, maybe because he noticed I was, I was there, he, he just stood up for that one twentieth of a second that I need, and so I got the photo. I'm trying to experiment a lot uh, with birds. I really like to take long shot to speed and kind of paint with, with photography. Obtain a photo that you cannot obtain again. It's just a, some, some such of a, a unique image. So the way to take this photo, simply take a, long, a relatively long shot to speed, 120 or 130 of a second, and panning, following your subject. And so hopefully you get your uh, subject sharp enough and all blur uh, background. Another technique that I like is a height key technique. So you simply overexpose the background and a bit your subject and you focus on uh, the contrast and the, and the line that your subject described. That's, that's why very often I transform the photo in uh, black and white. But generally I try to leave in the environment and the color um, original. I really like to take action shot. It's probably my, my favorite technique, taking a, a behavior or a moment which probably is not really visible with the naked eye. You have to play with the high shutter speed and get that fraction of a second when there's something happened and sometimes you, you can't even see what happened. You just realize uh, what happened in your photo. And the, the new camera allowed you to take uh, seven frame in a second, ten frame in a second. So definitely your new technology helps you a lot. I really like when possible to get close to birds in order to get a, an intimate portrait to enhance the, the details of the feathers and, feathers and the beautiful color. But I don't forget that we need to respect birds so we, we as soon as the birds show uh, some, some sign of disturbance, obviously it's good to leave them alone and go back home and just enjoy the photo that, I, that you have and that, that, that you take. Because uh, yeah, respect of birds is the main, uh, most important uh, rule, I think.